Matchmaker Teddy Brenner said, Marty Servo was the same type of fighter as Carmen Basilio. There was only one trouble with him. He did most of his boxing during the Depression, when there was no money around. He never had a TV fight. He was a victim of circumstances. He was born Mario Severino in Schenectady, New York on November 3, 1919. His mother Mildred died during his birth and he was raised by his father Louis, along with a host of friends and family members who helped out the hard-working widower. Servo suffered from rickets and was unable to walk until he was three years old. At the age of six he got into his first street fight and he grew up to be a determined young man, running cross-country in high school before turning to the sport of boxing fighting under the name of Babyface Sempervino. He was a natural from the start, winning 91 out of 95 amateur fights. In 1937, he won the National Golden Gloves featherweight title, and a year later, the Diamond Belt. Servo thought about becoming a Catholic priest before he was encouraged by his cousin, a pro boxer named Lou Ambers, to pursue a career in the ring. Servo moved to New York City and trained at Stillman's Gym under Charlie Goldman, who also coached Rocky Marciano. Al Weil became his manager, and it was Weil who shortened Mario Severino's name to Marty Servo. Turning pro in August of 1938, the 19-year-old converted southpaw turned heads immediately. He was fast, aggressive, and had the humble personality that boxing fans instinctively liked. In September of 1939, he was floored by Bobby Ivey, but arose and won a decision in what was called one of the best fights Connecticut had ever seen. A month later, Servo was nearly knocked out by Jerry Zello in the second round, but rallied back to win a lopsided decision. By September of 1941, he was undefeated at 42-0 before he took on a fellow undefeated fighter in Sugar Ray Robinson. Servo was forced to come down to under 140 pounds to meet Robinson's contract requirements. In the early rounds, Servo gave Robinson fits. His aggressive style took Sugar Ray by surprise as at 5'6", he charged in and got in under the 5'11 Robinson's punches. Servo's strategy was to stay in close and force Robinson to punch down instead of straight, lessening the effectiveness of his blows. But Servo faded late, blaming the weight loss, and Robinson won a close decision in one of his toughest fights to date. Five months later, Servo asked to face veteran Lou Jenkins, a former champion who had knocked out Servo's cousin Lou Ambers in seven rounds. Many thought Jenkins hit too hard for the young Servo. But Marty gave Jenkins a 10-round lesson in speed, winning an easy decision. Three months later, he rematched the now 31-0 Robinson. This go-around, there was no weight agreement, and Servo weighed in at his natural 143 pounds. The two fought to another controversial finish. Both fighters landed low blows in the second round, but it was Servo that received the point deduction from the referee. From the third round to the sixth, Robinson rocked Servo on numerous occasions, but he injured his hand in the seventh. Servo then rallied, forcing the fight for the first two and a half minutes of the rounds before Robinson staged flurries in the final 30 seconds. Their opposing strategies may have confused the scoring officials. The referee scored it 5-3 for Servo, while Judge Billy Healy had it 6-3 for Robinson. Strangely, Judge Tom Curley had it 9-1 for Robinson. The New York Daily News called it a draw. The verdict was booed so loudly that the announcer was unable to make himself heard over the public address system in order to introduce the next fight. Servo and manager Weil tried desperately for a third bout with Robinson, but were refused twice. World War II came and Servo entered the army before switching to the Coast Guard. He remained in military service for three years, dreaming of winning the championship, making a bundle of money, and sitting on top of the world. Returning to civilian life, Servo's manager Al Weil wasted no time in getting him a title shot against welterweight champion Freddie Cochran. Problem was, Weil had to guarantee Cochran $50,000 in order to get the shot. Servo blasted out the champion in four rounds, winning the title, but his purse was only $36,000. Owing Cochran an additional $14,000, Servo opted to face the hard-hitting middleweight Rocky Graziano in his next fight. The bout was a mismatch. Graziano held up Servo by the throat with his left glove and smashed his face with his right, breaking the welterweight champion's nose and stopping him in only two rounds. Servo received $38,000 and paid Cochran what he owed. He was then ordered to defend his title against Sugar Ray Robinson, but repeatedly had to ask for postponements as he re-injured his nose during sparring. 
His doctor told him that there was a piece of bone that could enter his brain if his nose was hit again. Initially, manager Al Wilde tried to hold up negotiations for a Robinson fight, thinking that the nose could heal. But Dr. Vincent Nardiello examined Servo and found nothing wrong with his nose, and the x-rays were negative. After two postponements, Servo was stripped of his title and was convinced by his team to retire. But after attending some fights over a year later, Servo got the bug to return to the ring and dispel some of the off-the-wall rumors that he had been killed in an auto accident. His first fight back went well with a second-round stoppage victory, but two weeks later, he was knocked out in less than 90 seconds by journeyman Joe Martino. I won't ever return to the ring, Servo said. I'm absolutely through. You can't lose to a person you've never heard of before and not feel it for a long time. Servo's pride was permanently injured, and he never returned to the ring. He supported himself working odd jobs, initially tending bar in New York City with former opponent Rocky Graziano, bringing in a lot of friends to keep him busy. Servo later moved out west to Pueblo, Colorado with his young family. He sold used cars and then became a foreman at a steel mill. But by 1963, he was in and out of hospitals, stricken with cancer of the spine. Doctors had to sever the nerves in his legs which confined him to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Hospital bills mounted. Doctors later removed two ribs, four discs from his spine, and nearly all of a lung. But Servo continued to display inexhaustible courage. I have a wonderful wife and children, Servo said, and I have so many friends. Can a man ask for more? Now deep in debt, a local sports writer raised over $13,000 to help with Servo's bills. I think Marty has put up a real good fight, but he's so depressed, his wife Carol said. The pain is awful. There's not a thing in the world he can do for himself. He cannot walk, cannot dress himself. Writer Red Smith described Marty Servo as the most confident of boxers, and the only time he ever went in knowing he couldn't win, his opponent was cancer. The former champion lived in agony but fought off the disease for six years before dying at the age of 49, leaving behind his wife and three children. A friend had invited him for a trip shortly before he died. It would be impossible for me to travel, but I appreciate your kindness, Marty wrote. Not only would my doctor say no, but as you know, I'm hurting. Not only physically, but financially. So keep me in your prayers, and maybe someday I will be able to make Heaven's Hall of Fame.